Pirates, by definition, were criminals. In the golden age of piracy between 1650 and 1720, the law was very clear on what punishment would befall someone convicted of piracy, and that punishment was hanging by the neck until death. Depending on what the pirate was caught doing and where would change what the pirate was accused of and what punishment he would receive. For example, if a pirate was caught stealing on land, he may end up getting whipped or spending some time in the pillory. Pirates often came from merchant ships or the Royal Navy and would have experienced the harsh punishments sailors were subjected to. The most common form of punishment on board ship was flogging. It normally took place on the main deck of a ship and started with the accused sailor being brought in front of the captain where he could plead his case. If he was found guilty, the sailor had his shirt removed, was tied to a wooden grating where the captain read the relevant article of war, and then lashed with the cat of nine tails from a boatswain's mate. The cat of nine tails, also known as the captain's daughter, was made from a piece of rope that had been unraveled into nine strands, each with several knots on one end. The other side was traditionally covered with red cloth and ceremoniously stored in a bag until use. This is likely where the phrase, the cat's out of the bag, originates, meaning, don't bother adding to your story now, you've already been judged guilty. The penalties for crimes could result in a dozen lashes for minor offenses like drunkenness, to up to 500 for serious crimes like theft, sedition, or mutiny. Those penalties were usually carried out in what was referred to as flogging around the fleet. The prisoner was rowed from ship to ship and received a number of lashes at each stop, and it could often take months to finish the sentence. In certain cases, a high number of lashes could kill a sailor if infection set in. Often the sailor's back was washed with salt water, which introduced numerous microbes into the cuts and added to the pain. Another Royal Navy punishment was running the gauntlet. The crew would form two columns on deck with each man holding a knotted rope. The sailor being punished was led through the gauntlet by two junior officers at sword point, one in front and one in back. This was to prevent the man from passing through too quickly. As he walked by, the men would each take turns striking him with their knotted ropes. The punishment was considered more honorable as the prisoner could take the beating like a man and stand upright among fellow sailors. The Dutch Navy introduced a punishment known as keel hauling, where the sailor would be tied to a rope that went around the underside of a ship. The man was dragged along the bottom, which was full of razor sharp marine growth. In addition to the marine growth, the man would smash his head off the underside and keel. If the man was dragged slowly, his weight may have allowed him to sink below the growth, but he would likely drown. This process was usually repeated several times. Needless to say, the men who became pirates hated these punishments and pirate captains didn't have the authority or a good reason to punish other pirates as they were voted in and could quickly be removed if they began to act like tyrants. It was, however, common to see some punishments spelled out in the pirate ship's articles. These laws had to do with pirates stealing from the rest, deserting in battle, or bringing women to sea. It made sense for the men to sign off on these articles because these crimes affected the other pirates. An example from Bart Roberts' articles spells out, If they defrauded the company to the value of a dollar in plate, jewels or money, marooning was their punishment. If the robbery was only betwixt one another, they contented themselves with slitting the ears and nose of him that was guilty, and set him on shore, not in an uninhabited place, but somewhere where he was sure to encounter hardships. Marooning was likely the thing a pirate feared the most, and for once, popular culture got it right. The marooned man was set on an island with a bit of rum and a pistol with one shot. The pistol was to be used for suicide after the pirate finished the rum. In most cases, a marooned pirate would indeed die, but some survived. A good example was Edward England, who, after being marooned on an island in the Indian Ocean with three others, managed to build a raft four months later. The men sailed to the pirate haven of Madagascar, where England survived until later in the year when he died, likely from a tropical disease. And what about walking the plank? Well, there are some historical instances of it happening, but none during the golden age of piracy. Is it possible it was done to torture a merchant crew and pirates felt they were holding out? Sure. But it's just not documented, so I can't say that it did happen. Speaking of pirates torturing, I don't think anyone comes close to Ned Lowe. Lowe used to tie a captive hands together with rope between the fingers and then light it on fire, burning the flesh down to the bone. On another account, after a Portuguese captain dropped a bag of gold overboard, instead of allowing the pirates to capture it, Lowe cut off the captain's lips with the cutlass, broiled them, and forced the captain to eat them before he was killed. It's rumored that Lowe was eventually set adrift after his crew had enough of his cruelty, and the story says he was rescued by a French ship. When the French learned who he was, he was tried for piracy and hanged in Martinique in 1724. This takes us back to the process of execution for a pirate. The British Admiralty had a legal jurisdiction for crimes committed on the high seas. 
In London, the execution dock was a place in the Thames River that was used for over 400 years. The dock was just below the low tide mark, which symbolized the jurisdiction. The pirates that were being executed were transported from Marshalsea or Newgate Prison in a cart behind the High Court Marshal on horseback. The High Court Marshal carried a ceremonial silver oar, which represented the Admiralty. Along the way, the condemned pirate was allowed to drink a quart of ale at a public house. Unlike conventional hangings, those convicted of piracy were executed with a short rope, which did not break the prisoner's neck. They died from slow asphyxiation, and the corpse was left hanging until at least three tides had washed over the body. In certain cases, usually high-profile offenders, the Admiralty would order the body to be tarred and gibbeted or hung in chains as a warning to others. Captain Kidd was executed for piracy on the execution dock, and after the rope broke on the first attempt, he was hanged again and his remains put on display in a gibbet for three years. Jamaica also had its own execution area at Gallows Point. Calico Jack Rackham was hanged there and hung in irons on an island near Port Royal as a warning to other pirates. I hope you all enjoyed this week's episode. I'm really happy to say that the channel has finally hit the 1,000 subscriber mark and I want to thank you all so much. If you can help out on Patreon or PayPal, the links for those are in the description below. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please like and comment.